back with part five of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version. And we are reading the book of Isaiah. And we just completed um, the book of, I'm sorry, the chapter 54. There's a lot of footnotes in, in Isaiah. So we were covering quite a bit of that in these three um, weeks as well. And there's a lot of correlation, as I said, into the Brit Kadashah from Isaiah, because he was prophesying also for future future time past the time that he had lived. Because Yeshua is definitely, definitely prophesied here, both his first coming and his second coming. So we're going to get into chapter 55 now. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the water, and you who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The trustworthy loyalty to David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you will summon a nation. You do not know a nation that did not know you will run to you because of Adonai, your God, and the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek Adonai while he may be found. This is very important for um, our time that we live in as well. Seek the Lord while he might be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous one his thoughts. And let him return to Adonai so he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. It is a declaration of Adonai. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without having watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to sow and bread to eat, so my word will be that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me in vain. And some Bibles say it will not return void. But it will accomplish what I intend and will succeed in what I send it for. This is the Lord saying this, um, by the way. His word does not return void. It will, it will do the thing that he sent it to do. Yes, you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you singing. And all the fields, all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, a cypress will come up, and instead of the briar, a myrtle will come up. And it will be a memorial to Adonai, an everlasting sign that will never be cut off. And one of the verses that is in the footnotes is Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open to you. And that is correlated to seek Adonai while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Also, Luke eleven nine 9 is part of that as well. And that reads, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. John four fourteen says, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. The water that I give him will become a fountain of water within him, springing up to eternal life. Rivers of living water, in other words. And John 7, 17 says, If anyone wants to do his will, he will know whether my teaching comes from God or if it is myself speaking. Revelation 21, verse 6 says, Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will freely give from the spring of the water of life. And Revelation 22 verse 17 says, The Ruach and the Brides, they come. 
and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes, wishes freely take the water of life. Chapter 56, Foreigners Keeping Shabbat. Thus, says Adonai, preserve justice, do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this, the Son of Man, who takes hold of it, who keeps from profaning Shabbat, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let a son of a foreigner who has joined himself to Adonai say, Adonai will surely exclude me from his people. Now let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus, Adonai, for thus says Adonai, To the eunuchs who keep my Shabbat, Shabbatat, who choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant, I will give to them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off, also the foreigners who join themselves to Adonai to minister to him and to love the name of Adonai and to be his servants, all who keep from profaning Shabbat and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and let them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Adonai Elohim, who gathers the dispersed of Israel declares, I will still, I will gather still others to him, to those already gathered. This is the house of prayer for all nations. All you beasts of the field come to eat. All you beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. All of them know nothing. All of them are mute dogs, unable to bark. Dreamers lying down, lovers of slumber, and the dogs are greedy. Are greedy. Um, they never have enough. They are shepherds with no discernment. They have all turned to their own way, each to his own gain, one and all. Come, let's get wine. Let's guzzle strong drink. Tomorrow we will be like today, only even better. These are the prosperity ones um, that that is all they're focused on that he's also referring to here. When we think about today and how this applies to today, shepherds with no discernment, um, and they've turned to their own way, the way the the way of man, and not biblically the words of the Bible. So they're not opening a lot, are not opening the Bible and doing what the Bible says. They're they're twisting and turning the words of the Lord, which the devil did very nicely. Um, to deceive Eve. So we need to really be discerning and use that discernment. Ephesians 2, verses 12 to 22, reads, At that time you were separate from Messiah, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Messiah Yeshua, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of the Messiah, for he is our Shalom, the one who made the, made the two into one and broke down the middle wall of separation. Within his flesh he made powerless the hostility, the law code of the mitzvah, contained in regulations. He did this in order to create within himself one new man from the two groups making shalom and to reconcile both the God and one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. And he came and proclaimed shalom to you who were far away and shalom to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father. And he's talking about Jew and Gentile in one body together and both having access through Yeshua. Yeshua bridged that gap and brought both together as one big family. So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. You have been built on the foundation made up of the emissaries and prophets with Messiah Yeshua himself being the cornerstone. 
in him the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple for the Lord in him you also are being built together in God's dwelling place in the Ruach so this is where it is it is stated also um, you know as well in in chapter 56 with the house of prayer and how foreigners you know meaning the Gentiles that was that that was what was being referred to in Isaiah's days could come in because of Yeshua so that's the one new man Matthew 21 12 to 13 reads then Yeshua entered the temple and drove out all those selling and buying in the temple he overturned the tables of the money changers and the and the seats of those selling doves and he said to them it is written my house shall be a house of prayer but you are making it a den of thieves and this can also be seen also in mark 11 verses 15 to 17 and also in luke chapter 19 45 to 46 all says the same thing basically so so this was a really you know when it's depicted in more than one gospel i mean not not to say just that one is not important but it's really really um really important and really made a an impression on all of them that were writing you know matthew mark luke john and matthew mark luke and john were the four gospels so when you see it in repeated in 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 other gospels the very same scenario you know that it made a huge impression on them who witnessed it so chapter 57 remove remove every stumbling block the righteous one perishes but no one takes it to heart godly men are taken away but no one discerns that the righteous man is taken from evil he enters into shalom they rest on their beds, each who walked in his integrity. But as for you, come here, you children of, of a sorceress, offspring of an adulterer and prostitute. Whom are you mocking? At whom do you open your mouth wide and stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, offspring of deceit? You who burn with lust among the oaks and under every green tree, who sacrifice your children in the wadis and under the class of the rocks, among the smooth stones of the wadi is your portion. They are your lot. To them you have even poured out a drink offering, made a grain offering. Shall I relent concerning these things? Upon a high and lofty mountain you made your bed. You also went up there to offer sacrifice behind the door and the doorpost. You have set up your memorial sign. For away from me you uncovered, went up and made your, your bed wide and cut covenant with them. You love their bed, you looked on their nakedness, you journeyed to the king with oil and multiplied your perfumes. You sent your ambassadors far away and made them go down to Sheol. You wearied of the length of your way, yet you did not say it is hopeless. You found renewed strength, so you did not weaken. Whom was it you dreaded and feared so that you lied, but you did not remember me or take it to heart have i not kept silent a long time yet you do not fear me i will expose your righteousness and your deeds they will not profit you when you cry out will your collection of idols save you the wind will carry them off a breath will take them away but he who takes refuge in me will possess the land and will inherit it inherit my holy mountain then it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus says the high and exalted one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place, yet also with a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite. 
for I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit would grow weak before me, the breath of those whom I made. Because of the iniquity of his unjust gain, I was angry, I struck him, I hid my face, I was angry. But he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners, creating the praise of his of lips. Shalom, shalom to him who is far and to him who is near, says Adonai, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like a troubled sea, for it cannot rest. And its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no shalom, says my God, for the wicked. And that's the end of chapter 57. Okay. Fasting and sedaka. Um, that is spelled T Z E D A K A H, and that is a and that word is a charitable giving, um, and this is in chapter fifty eight. Pray aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a shofar, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me to day to day and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did right. And had not forsaken their God's decree, they asked me for righteous judgments. They delight in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted, yet you do not see? Why have, have we afflicted our souls, yet you take no notice? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Behold, you fast for strife and contention and to strike with a wicked fist. You should not fast as you do as you do today, to make your voice heard on high. In this fast I have chosen, is, is this a fast that I have chosen? A day for one to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and spreading out sackcloth and ashes? We call this a fast and a day acceptable to Adonai. See, we know, just to pause that for a minute, when we pray, we need to pray for what is the will of God, too. I, I know we pray for needs and pray for a lot of things, but if it's not the will of God, you know, you may not get the answer that you want. Um, and you have to really search is, you know, is this, is this acceptable to Adonai? Is not this fast I choose to release the bonds of wickedness, to untie the cords of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free? and to tear off every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will spring up speedily. Your righteousness will go before you. The glory of Adonai is your rear guard. Then you will call, and Adonai will answer. You will cry, and he will say, here I am. If you get rid of the yoke among you, finger pointing and bad mouthing, if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will be like midday. Then Ed and I will guide your, you continually, satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Some of you will rebuild the ancient ruins, will raise up the age-old foundations, will be called repairer, repairer of the breach, restorer of streets for dwelling. If you turn back your foot from Shabbat, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call Shabbat a delight, the holy day of Adonai, honor, honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, not seeking your own pleasure, not seeking your usual speech, then you will delight yourself to Adonai, and I will let you ride over the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your father Jacob, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. So again, you know, we have to have our heart and spirit in the right place, too, and, and be, in, in, in a right, be right with God, too, when we pray and when we're fasting and praying for things as well. And... It is all for his glory, not for ours. So we need to also keep that in mind. Is what we're asking, is what we're wanting, 
bringing glory to God or is it for our own selfish needs that only serve ourselves because we're not we're servants of the most high God chapter 9 separation from God behold Adonai's hand is not too short to save nor his ear too dull to hear rather your iniquities have made a separation between you and you and your God remember when we talk about sin sin is separation to be separate from God and it keeps us separate from God and before I go any further into this I think I'm going to restart this in the next part because we're already I can't believe we're at 20 minutes already so I will be back with the next part